Well, how are you today, my dears? I hope you're having a great day. Today, Grandma wants to share a story called The Fabled Life of Aesop. Now, you've probably heard of Aesop. Grandma has told you some stories that he is very famous for. And because Aesop lived so long ago, some of these stories that we hear from him and, and about his life may not be completely accurate, but we do the best we can. One day, a slave was born. It was sometime around 2,500 years ago and somewhere near Greece. No one knows for sure because the baby's parents were slaves too. No one recorded the history of slaves so no one knows their names. The only thing we know is the name they gave their baby boy, Aesop. Aesop was taken from his parents and sent to work in the great fields of Samos, a hot, dry island in the Mediterranean Sea. And even the fact Aesop being a slave is not 100% for sure. It might be true. Growing up, Aesop learned to speak differently from people who were free. Slaves had to be careful what they said. One day out in the field, a slave said to Aesop, I heard the master has smelly feet. But the master overheard. That person was never seen again. Uh-oh. He said something that wasn't very kind about the master. So the slaves learned to tell stories in ways that wouldn't get them in trouble. They spoke about the animals and the natural world around them. The next day in the field, the person, person working next to Aesop said, did you hear the story about the lion? He stepped on a thorn and his paw got infected. Oh, said Aesop, so that's why his paw smells. Aesop learned to speak in code. Who was the lion? He was the master. And if your paw or your foot gets infected, it can get smelly. Everyone soon noticed there was something special about Aesop. One day, the water in the well dropped so low that the bucket couldn't reach. No one knew what to do, but Aesop had an idea. Everyone thought it was so clever that they all pitched in to help. The water began to rise, and when it reached the top, their cheers drew the attention of his master, Xanthus. You see what they're doing? They're dropping rocks in the well. Even the crow is helping out dropping the rocks in the well, making the water rise. And so the master said, you're clever enough to help slaves, but are you clever enough to help me? Aesop hesitated. He was scared. He had to find a way to tell the truth without angering his master. He had to speak in code. So Aesop said... One day, a mouse accidentally stepped on a sleeping lion. The lion woke and grabbed the mouse. Let me go, begged the mouse. Someday I'll repay you. The lion laughed at the idea of a puny mouse helping him, but he let the mouse go. See that big, strong lion? Lion again, a symbol for the master. And the puny mouse, the slave. The next day, the lion got trapped in a hunter's net. He roared helplessly. The mouse came running. He gnawed at the net until it broke. The lion was free. You see, said the mouse, even a mouse can help a mighty lion. 
When Aesop finished his story, Xanthus laughed and said, very clever indeed. Come work in my house, little mouse. You can chew on any nets that trap me. Xanthus put Aesop to work running his business. One day, Xanthus and another master named Jaden had an argument over money. To settle it, they summoned Aesop and ordered him to judge who was right. Again, Aesop hesitated. Whichever master he chose, the other would be angry. Either one could have him killed. He had to keep both masters happy. He thought and thought. And then he said, One day, a very hot day, a lion and a boar found a small watering hole. A boar is kind of like a big pig. They argued over who should drink first. They began to fight. As they fought, they noticed that vultures were gathering, waiting to eat the body of the loser. See those vultures up on the branch? <laughs> They're drawn with pictures of forks in their mouth because vultures like to eat dead things. So they're thinking that these two animals are going to fight and one's going to be dead and they'll get to eat the dead animal. The lion and the boar stopped fighting immediately and shared the water. The vultures went hungry that day. So Aesop's solution had them quit fighting. So the vultures had to go hungry. So it's better to make peace with your friends, said Jaden, than be eaten by your enemies. So that was the moral of the story. The two masters agreed that Aesop's advice was very wise. They settled their argument peacefully. Jaden was so impressed that he asked to buy Aesop. You see, no matter how clever or kind Aesop was, he was still just a slave, and slaves were something to be bought and sold. Xanthus agreed, and once again, Aesop was taken away. So Jaden bought him. Now he was a slave that belonged to another master named Jaden. In his new house, Aesop went to work. For every problem his new master faced, Aesop created a story about sly foxes, foolish farmers, or clever mice. The stories warned against greed and deceit. They taught the value of working hard and being honest, humble, and kind. Many of them taught another hidden lesson as well. It was something no master would pick up on, but every slave or powerless person would understand. They taught them how to survive in a world that was sometimes unjust and cruel. And they are known today as Aesop's Fables. He was a very wise person, might have been a slave, who told stories that had a good moral to them that would help people learn to survive in a hard, sometimes cruel world. And so I hope you will enjoy some Aesop fables that Grandma has already shared. And Grandma will tell you some more too, because they're good stories for all of us. And I hope that you know that Grandma loves you. And I'll talk to you some more later. Bye.